city wonders in Malaysia carry out disaster relief in the aftermath of flood. A year in blessing ceremony, volunteers show dedication to future recycling work. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Siri Su, thank you for joining us. Heavy rainfall led to flooding Kuching province in Malaysia. As a result, more than 4,400 people had to settle in 49 evacuation centers. City volunteers started to assess damages and carry out disaster relief work. <laughs> The road is no longer visible and flooding was in many places in Sarawak after the rain. I went back to the office to get more information. In the beginning, the water just came to here, but then I came back in less than five minutes. The water level was already here. Fortunately, I was wearing a life jacket. In this disaster, the flood came suddenly and the villagers had to flee for their lives, which was an extremely thrilling scene. The roof of the shower room was also washed away. The shower room and some windows were destroyed. The flood is very destructive, and this year, coupled with the abnormal weather, even the evacuation center was not to be spared. Did you volunteers mobilize urgently to understand the situation after the flooding disaster? This year's rain is heavy and the water came quickly. There has been no flooding in the evacuation center before. This month this year, water flooded in. The survivors were forced to move upstairs. As the survivors came quickly, there was no time to clean up. The volunteers immediately set out to use supplies to help relieve their urgent needs, such as keeping warm as soon as possible. In Cambodia, the raining season is from May to November every year. During this period last year, Benten Ben experienced drought and two floods, affecting many residents. Upon receiving the government's request, city volunteers rushed there immediately to hold three distributions in three counties. They gave out rice and cooking oil to nearly 3,000 households. Wow. <laughs> For half a year, from May to October last year, Batampan province in Cambodia experienced drought and two successive floods, affecting many residents in several counties. Upon receiving the government's request, the volunteers immediately extended a helping hand. The capable people help the incapable. This kind of mutual assistance and mutual love is what we should learn. Street distributions are held in three counties within two days. According to the family size, each household can get the appropriate amount of rice and cooking oil. A total of nearly 3,000 households are being helped. Normally, if we host a distribution, we'll give each household a set of supplies, but Ziji is very different. They will find out how many people in each household before distribution, and the bigger families can receive more supplies. Thank you so much for your help. With this rice, at least we can save out some of our living expenses. Although they suffered the disaster, residents there are still willing to help others. The donation box at the distribution venue has gathered love from everyone. I didn't donate much, but I know that city volunteers will definitely use this donation to help more people in need. There are not many city volunteers in Cambodia. Because of the recent pandemic control order, the manpower has become even more limited. Fortunately, local residents have taken the initiative to help, so that the distribution can proceed smoothly. As I keep on moving packages of rice, actually I'm quite tired, but I'm very happy because I'm helping my people. Because of volunteering, I've expanded my horizons. I've lived in the city before, and I didn't understand the difficulties of rural people's life at all. This time, because of the pandemic, pandemic and floods, their lives are really very hard. When Siji comes to help, I also want to contribute my part. The affinity between Siji and residents of Batampin province was developed 26 years ago, and now they connect again because of the floods. It is believed that this affinity will last forever. In Hong Kong, a group of volunteers appeared at street corners during nighttime, providing winter supplies for homeless people. This time, they also gave out hot food and soup. Let's join them there.
As it gets dark, the first stop for volunteers is at a shoe store. These are our best-selling shoes, size 42 and 43, but since it's overdue, we have these for you. Volunteers pick the correct sizes for the corresponding gender. During the pandemic, we are able to provide sports shoes to the homeless. It's important to let them feel the warmth during times like these. The second stop, from head to toe, seven to nine winter supplies are packed into gray bags according to the list. On to the next stop, each gray bag is given to homeless people who live in street corners. There are many supplies in this winter distribution, especially Brother Wu. He told us about this beforehand and measured our shoe sizes. I feel very happy because many people are caring for us. The food and clothes given to me makes me feel at home. In the dark, the homeless receive supplies from Zichi volunteers. After feeling the warmth once again, the winter doesn't seem to be cold anymore. In Harbin, 74-year solitary senior Mr. Liu makes a living by herding sheep and selling goat milk. City volunteers have been caring for him, treating him like an elderly family member. Recently, his courtyard and the path in front of his house have been covered with snow. As a result, he could not go out to herd sheep. Upon learning of his plight, volunteers came to clear snow for him. After a night of snowing, Changing Village seems to be covered in snow. Volunteers walk in the 50 centimeter deep snow, heading to care recipient Mr. Liu's house to carry out a mission. Sir, we have come here. Woo, the snow is so deep. Hearing the volunteers call, Mr. Liu walks slowly to open the door. Volunteers discover that the courtyard is filled with snow and they feel for Mr. Liu. Harbin City Volunteers mission for the day is to help solitary Mr. Liu clear the snow. Using all kinds of tools, volunteers have been doing the work for three consecutive days and Mr. Liu is very touched. Do you feel guilty that we are doing the work? It is fine. We are young and we are willing to help you. Don't feel bad. To comfort Mr. Liu, who cried, volunteers delivered sleeveless jacket and cotton pants to him. They told him to see volunteer service as their expression of filial piety. Did you volunteers are so good, they are so kind-hearted, they gave me cotton pants, clothes and food, they are so nice to me. After volunteers clear the snow, Mr. Liu can continue to herd sheep. Under the morning sun, the senior sheep on the field have become a beautiful picture in people's eyes. At a year and blessing ceremonies in Yuling and Jiayi, volunteers arrive to show their dedication to future recycling work. A couple shows us how they're doing this together, while some volunteers show recycling can help them recover from previous injuries. No matter the reason, every recycling volunteer is ready to give. Receiving the red envelopes of blessing and wisdom from Master Zhenyan, the new year begins as recycling volunteers from Yuning and Jiayi fully dedicate themselves to recycling. At the venue, couple Huang Yongjing and Yang Xiaoying show how they are always together. 
We are the same. He is a medical officer. I am too. He is a general affairs officer. Me too. He deals with men while I deal with women. Suffering from a neck injury due to a car accident, recycling volunteer Huang Yongji recovered mostly after a surgery. He now does fence maintenance in order to recover. After three years of physical rehabilitation, the effects weren't good. Now I'm recovering faster by maintaining fences. Fully dedicated to recycling, Siji volunteer Chen Wang Yuyan had surgery on both knee joints, but in order to be back to do recycling, she made it through physical rehabilitation. First, my left foot had a surgery. After half a year, my right foot underwent surgery. Three months later, I'm here during recycling. From Jiayi, Siji volunteer Zhong Jingzhi not only does recycling, she actively helps whenever there is a need. For the first month, I did three days of volunteering, but then when I was asked to do six days, I agreed. As Master Jin Yan sees it, the most beautiful hands are the hands that give without asking. In 2020, Tsuji and Jai City Government has signed MOU to work together in promoting environmental protection and charity work. The mobile recycling education card tours around Taiwan has taken off from Jai. As Dama Master Jin Yan came to Jai, volunteers share their experiences. Tsuji Foundation and Jai City Government has signed MOU last year to do good deeds together. The mobile recycling education car has taken off on Jiayi. Back then, a university teacher was amazed by the mobile recycling education car and has invited volunteers to help with the island-wide tour activity. The master said that we need to pave the small road and open the big path. This affinity has been formed. We will continue to make the love connection shine. More people's strength is needed. A famous clothing enterprise has joined the national team. Its employees are also embracing vegetarianism. To reduce cooling and nurture compassion can make everyone healthier and save the earth. From public offices and enterprises, everyone is contributing their share to benefit the public. In Taipei Sta and District, a community year and blessing ceremony is about to be held. Volunteers mobilize and carry out the cleaning task. Despite the cold weather, everyone worked hard and welcomed the participants with joy. From the cold door outside to the windows and doors inside, everything is thoroughly cleaned. Even though the weather was very cold, volunteers become warmer as they work. The cleaning is to remove all our troubles and ignorance throughout the year and to welcome the new year with a very pure heart. The community members will be also invited to participate in the year-end blessing ceremony. Therefore, the district volunteers clean up the old building to look brand new, welcoming the new year. We want participants to feel they've just come home. So Tsuji brothers and sisters did their best to clean up. In one afternoon, volunteers worked together to complete the task. With the big red lanterns hanging high, sweeping the past heads and waiting for the blessing arrival. In Malaysia, as Penang, a key recipient and his family live in a rifle range community. The adults have health problems and must also take care of their son who suffers from mental problems. They help this family live in a cleaner environment, so the volunteers are here to help them. Tai Chu Hawk's family of three live in a one-bedroom apartment. The couple lacks healthy bodies to do household chores. As Siji visits them on a regular basis, they want to provide a cleaner environment for the family. The couple like to collect stuff, a lot of stuff. Today our main focus is to clear away the excess things. We're also checking on the water and electricity. We changed a few light bulbs and some other household items. Later the entrepreneur, volunteers, will come to clean once more and give the place a coat of paint. Tsai 
Tae's son suffers from mental illness, but he is interested in electronic repairs. That day, he was a great little helper as he contributed to the electrical repairs in the house. Sun Hung is a hyperactive child. In the beginning, I was really worried about his safety, but in the end, it seemed like he knew more about this stuff than we did. We also hope to be able to find a path for him to change this family around. Thank you so much for the help. Our house is not as messy as before, but we are content in life. We have enough to eat. The child can go to school, so we are happy. We are fortunate to be safe and secure. Among the volunteers that day, former care recipients came to help and paid their love forward. Also in Penang, Malaysia, a Tsuji care recipient's husband has passed away, leaving her in despair. Her house is filled with her husband's belongings. So the volunteers have come to care for her and clean up her living environment. They hope she can start a new chapter of her life. The father in the family passed away in 2020, and the children and wife were traumatized. There are many father's belongings left behind. She said that we can take it. However, we can tell from her facial expressions that she's very sad. She's learning to let go. The most important thing is to change her environment so she can start over in the new year. We place the items at the Recycling Education Center and you can go there with your children. We will organize the items together. You take what you need. If you are unsure about it, you can store them first. We will then give you one to two weeks to think about it. Volunteers help the wife to let go of the unnecessary items. The small area is cluttered with miscellaneous items and past memories. A volunteer accidentally injures herself. <laughs> I thought that it's very inconvenient for me to wear shoes. Then when I was cleaning up, I stepped on glass and my foot felt painful. A volunteer sister pulled a glass out with a nail clipper. It was long. I wanted to help her get a new environment so she would not think about an unhappy past. Volunteers are willing to help the wife, hoping this family can start a new chapter of their lives. Volunteers have helped me reduce the miscellaneous items and are very happy. My burdens have been lessened. In the new year, I hope to have a new start. If there's a new environment, I'll feel at ease. I love you. In response to climate change and environmental degradation, the United Nations launched 17 sustainable development policies, one of which was reducing the use of pesticides. Taiwan's Council of Agriculture also announced the goal of reducing chemical pesticides in 10 years. While in the past three years, the use of pesticides has reduced, but we still have a long way to go to meet this goal. Follow our report as we investigate the issue. There's more than a dozen pesticides, among them was Viprono. Not only are bees poisoned by pesticides, but also people. After the pesticide was sprayed on the farmland, other family members did not know it, and then picked some to eat. Although chemical pesticides are effective in preventing diseases and insect pests quickly and powerfully, over-reliance on pesticides and fertilizers can cause a vicious cycle. We use fungicides in the field. In fact, it not only kills pathogens, but also many microorganisms. When there are fewer and fewer microorganisms in the soil, you can find that the efficiency of the fertilizer is getting worse and worse, and farmers are forced to use more fertilizer. The chemical fertilizers in the soil will move to the groundwater. When we drink the groundwater, this is actually where we fear the fertilizers go. Taiwan's intensive farming has led to the use of a large amount of pesticides. Taiwan's current pesticide use, when compared to Japan, South Korea and China, is probably more than 10 kilograms per hectare, which is considered to be relatively high. In 2017, the Council of Agriculture proposed a 10-year pesticide halving policy. In the past three years, the amount of pesticides has been declining from the highest of more than 10,000 metric tons in 2017 
2019, only 8,900 metric tons were used. Much attention has been paid to biological pesticides. The microbial liquefied bacillus amylus and another three kinds of bacteria accounted for 80 percent of the total. At present, all research units domestically and abroad will use microorganisms as the main axis of development and research. We mainly focus on the production of microbial fertilizers and microbial pesticides. Even the Agricultural Technology Research Institute has established an agricultural microbiology factory. Taiwan's agriculture has created a whirlwind of microbial materials, but how to use it is the key. The need for microorganisms is often not just a single bacteria. A group of microorganisms may be needed at the same time. The manufacturer will produce one or two microorganisms separately, but they are not able to fully integrate with the site. Whether the soil is healthy or not, we can rely on this next generation sequencing technology to confirm the population and number of microorganisms and prescribe the right medicine. The academic community is also working hard to make the use of microorganisms in agriculture more popular. This fermenter can automatically grow photosynthetic bacteria and this doctoral student has walked out of the laboratory and brings the fungus to the field. Microorganisms still have to come alive and their activity has an effect on plants. It is also through this cultivation method that the farmers can learn that after the cultivation the ground will see an increase in bacterial activity which will positively impact plants more than the cost of use. In this local youth farming organization, bacteria cultivation has become known as a major helper of crops. In the past, when the agricultural demand was high, they would like to grab the market quickly. Our younger farmers also found that this kind of biological agent is the greatest help to the farmers themselves. First, it helps absorb nutrients and then it grows. And then, of course, pests and diseases will decrease. Young farmers are willing to try photosynthetic bacteria and hope that this trend of microbial materials can replace chemical fertilizers and pesticides and inject new vitality into local farmland. In Indonesia, the demand branch has canceled care recipients gathering due to the pandemic. Despite that, volunteers deliver gifts to care recipients' homes. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.